Hassan. Hi, Hassan. Salam. Uh, I'm from Turkey. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the Turkish for hello, so. Uh, merhaba. 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 Yeah. Merhaba. Okay, I'm going to try to remember that. Yeah. I know, I know one word in every language. It's, it, uh, it's only when you reply that I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a start. So. Uh, my question is, you mentioned Hegel, and, uh, which is actually great. And uh, actually, he should set a great example to entrepreneurs because he says, uh, fear to make a failure is failure itself. Uh, so actually, we should take an example. Uh, but from VC point of view, you said uh, more than 80% of companies you invested fails, right? And so this means even if we get invested by a VC, we have a, a quite high chance of failure. Mm -hmm. And then w how would our chances of getting invested again after failure would be? So do you invest or would you invest a company that you invested before and failed? Would you invest the company again or that person again? So what determines your criteria on reevaluating a person who yeah. failed before? Well, you know, the, the right answer is yes, of course I would. But, you know, I invested in Travis Kalanick, the Uber founder in his prior company, Red Swoosh. Oh. And um, Red Swoosh didn't work out very well. Um, me and Michael Harrington both invested, and Travis came to us quite, to, quite close to the end of Red Swoosh and said, um, I have an investor who wants to buy your shares. And we said, wow, awesome, because um, this thing is going nowhere. Let's sell them. And uh, the investor turned out to be Mark Cuban, and Mark Cuban bought my shares and Arrington's shares in Red Swoosh. And two weeks later, Travis sold Red Swoosh to Akamai, which he hadn't told us about. Uh, and Mark Cuban got all the upside. So I, I kind of thought that was shady, let's say. So when Travis came and said, do you want to invest in Uber? I said, absolutely no way. <laughs> Am I going to invest in, in your next idea? So I didn't, which of course was a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he screwed me and then I screwed myself. Um, and, and so I, I think um, the true answer isn't yes or no. That the true answer is it really depends why someone failed yeah. and what they learned. Right. Um, it's fine to fail. Uh, culturally, in America, it's extremely fine to fail. Culturally, in England, it's much harder to fail. So every culture is different. But um, I think there is an understanding that failure is learning. But then you've got to say, well, what did you learn? So it's very specific to the person and why they failed and what they learned. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Last one. Hi, nice to meet you, Luis. Hi, Luis. All right, so... I, I wanted to say, como esta, thinking you might be Spanish, but you could be Portuguese or anything else. <laughs> I'm from so Mexico, so you, right. you're, you're right. <laughs> but um, anyway, so my question is, so you always talk about, you're talking right now about waves and trends and how we have to have the right timing to be early enough for the product to be viable and kind of um, groundbreaking, but at the same time not to be too late so everyone can kind of take us over or it's, you know, too obvious. But most of us right now, you know, we're not from the U.S., so we're going to go back to our home countries where you have all these global trends that, as you said, you know, our blockchain, you know, Internet of Things, um, all these different trends that um, even though they're global trends, um, our, our same countries don't have the technology or the systems or the just the foundation to be able to catch up with these trends. So what would be your recommendation? Should we kind of take the context of our own hometowns and try to work around those? Or should we try to take the context from you know, the world trends and try to take them back to our hometown? Or what, what would be your, your idea on that? Um, well, I, a lot of the answer depends a lot on your own ambition. Um, if you want to build a business and support yourself and an employee base and a family, <clears throat> using your home base and doing something organic is completely rational and sensible. If you want to do a venture scale business, you have to start with the global trends and figure out how they apply globally. You know, think of Skype. Sk Skype, Nicholas Zenstrom, who did Skype, was from Estonia. It, it, not a promising place to start a global startup at that time. But he did, and he succeeded. And the reason he succeeded is because the internet had made everything global. 
So it didn't matter that he was in Estonia, as long as he built an application that everybody wanted and he could get it to them, he could build a global business out of Estonia. So I, I actually think Silicon Valley is, and, and, the, and the blockchain really accelerates this, is gonna be part of a much flatter world where you can do globally ambitious ideas from almost anywhere. So it really depends on the idea and the team and the applicability to the trend. So I, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I think the, the answer is who do you want to be? And then pick the right strategy for who you want to be. And if you, you know, a, a big part of me wants to be back in my hometown in a beautiful little house looking at the ocean, you know, um, and another part of me wants to be the next big thing. And we all have both elements in us, by the way, all of us. And it's really choosing one uh, and, and then going for it. And it has to be genuine. You can't fake it. You know, it's, it, I think the second thing is you have to genuinely have some passion for the thing you choose because it's going to be really hard. And if you, if you aren't actually driven, I, I, I won't name names, but I have this founder. He's a, he's a German-born, Scottish-educated guy, and I've done three companies with him, but I didn't intend to do three. I intended to do one, but he kept pivoting. And he pivoted at the point it got hard, not because it wasn't working, but because it was hard. And he said, well, this is, this is his first one was called, it was uh, doing delivery from local stores to your house. And now, which, which now, by the way, is a common thing. He was very early in that, but it got hard, so he stopped. His second one was putting um, beacons, Bluetooth beacons on tables in restaurants and automating the menu coming up on your phone when you sat down at the table and making it possible to order from the kitchen at the table without standing in line. As soon as he realized it was hard to place the beacons, he pivoted again to a completely different idea. And then he ran out of money. So there's something to be said for determination and passion and not giving up. There's always, pivot's fine if it's the right thing to do, but not because it just got hard. It should, you should pivot because it isn't gonna work, and not because it's hard. And for that, you need passion, enthusiasm, and determination when it gets hard. Um, so I think what the idea is has to be 100% about you. You have to really believe in it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks everyone. <laughs>